All right. So me and Danny here, we, uh, we've been talking uh, back and forth even before this COVID stuff. And um, we had kind of weird years last year and um, we decided we should talk about it. And what better of a format and platform than uh, Zoom and the internet? I mean, if we're going to go ahead and just lay it all out there, might as well do it so everybody can judge us, right? That's, that's I mean, the way it should be done. I just want cancel culture to understand the pig I am um, and just, just to just know where, you know, where I stand on every level of everything. So I'm Absolutely. entering all my dirty laundry and here I am. Yeah. And I mean, a disclaimer, this, you might know us, you may never met us, but you might know us on the personal level and stuff. And um, I think this is going to share a new, um, a new side of us that not a lot of us know. So, yeah, and if and if you didn't want to know, it's not even up to you at this point. So yeah, you're you're welcome, in it. Welcome to our hell. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> but um, that's exactly, dude. That's exactly what it is. This, this is our hell, and I blame it all on uh, when I went to record um your episode for Stupid Kid. When uh, what was it that stole? Like there's something that that took my soul as I was walking out. I forgot what it was. Oh, uh, was it like an item in my house? Yeah, something like an item in your house or in your studio. Like, you? God, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Was it a mirror? No, it was something else. I don't know. It was twelve. It was like 13 months ago. That's like it was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's 2019, bro. That's that's yeah, well, that year. I heard someone at work today or today. I didn't have work today. Um, like Wednesday, like 2020 doesn't count. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> oh, that's that's yeah, that's, tell, that's really enlightening yeah t- yeah tell it to my bank account and tell it to yeah my exactly the rent the shit that yeah. you have to deal with yeah let, let me tell it to my mortgage oh i'm sorry mr uh yeah. whatever my mortgage is 2020 doesn't count i get fr- i get no mortgage payment for this year but yeah i don't know if you've heard but uh 2020 doesn't count so um no interest um i will default on every loan i have yeah. <laughs> like like oh that'd be cool dude like it's like it's always 20 somethings and i know i don't care if it's it's probably not even my demographic but it's always 20 somethings that have that stupid attitude like oh it's cool i'll just jump on unemployment and uh you know no you know what it was cool when we were younger right like, i know um, i like that was my mentality but now i'm like I'm in my mid thirties. I'm like, no, nah, dude, I cannot just jump on unemployment because I'm too lazy to do my job or yeah, and, because I'm like, whatever. And you know that like, your ass pays to... for that shit. So, you know, yeah, we're it's... old. We're old now. We're the old people from the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> used to, I've always been that guy though. I'm always Mr. Complain, Mr. Negativity. So I'm cool with it. Um, I've always been like, what's this new, like this new TikTok? I'm like, wait, what's this TikTok shit now we're talking about? I'm like, what, what is this? I tried because one of my buddies told me it's a great way to get, to get yourself out there, but I didn't get it. And uh, I'm okay mm-hmm. with that. And then when I found out the Chinese were using it to spy on American people, I'm like, eh. I end up winning. Well, I'm you know like, what? Sure, there you go. But what do I have for Damn, them to even find? Oh, dude, but you could have been huge right now in China, though. Dude, I could have been huge. Plus, I uh, I could have just totally fucked with them, like made them think I didn't know they were watching me, and then just did all mm-hmm. these randomly stupid things that they would think was cool. You know, like, oh, look at this guy. Like, this is how Americans think things are cool, and I'm just doing total <laughs> dumb shit so they yeah. can eat it and look stupid in front of their friends. Well, let me ask you this though: if you, if we, if you would have known how 2020 was going to play out you know since our last conversation like imagine like where we'll we'll be right now dude if we knew all this shit was going to go down i'll tell you right now we'd be filthy rich because we won't have made the right stock investment moves um oh yeah i would have bought stock in amazon i would have uh yeah dude i mean just basically we would have done the shit that all the rich people did because that's pretty much what they did they they all talked together um Mm -hmm. probably through zoom and um they're like hey by the way they're going to shut the government down or the, you know, this, 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 the country down and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, dump your stock here and uh, maybe buy some here. 
Yeah. They, dude, it's, they say Shit. there's no insider training, but that's bullshit. You know they all talk. No. You know they, they work around, like, the like that gray area where they're like, hey, it's not really illegal, but it's technically it's illegal. Yeah, like, they'll throw it in a They'll throw it in the satanic Bible at a Starbucks. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, look what I found inside the satanic Bible. And lo and behold, an index card with all the, in, with all the trade in, trader, in, <laughs> trader secrets that you were looking for. Which segues the, the reason, right into <laughs> which the, the, reason, right into the inception. Yeah, no. And the reason uh, Ryan is saying this is because, um, so... A little backstory about how this uh, podcast got started is because um, about a year ago, like in May of last year, I was invited to be a part of the Stu- uh, Stoop Kid, which is maybe the greatest episode, maybe the greatest podcast ever it made. Probably, it probably my original. was the greatest episode. Yeah, and this besides my podcast that I'm in, but um, but we we kind of catched up. We haven't talked to each other for a while, and then um, a few months later. Like I put, I think I posted something on Facebook. I don't, I don't know how it happened, but we started jokingly talking about like mental health, mm-hmm. and then um, you know we slid into each other's DMs and started talking about like, hey, we should do like a podcast about it, like, like you know about men, our generation, how we're dealing with mental illness and mental health. And time passed by, and then um. Um, Ryan over here sent me some stickers from the Stoop Kid, which I, I still have. And in there, he sent me a little note, like, hey, dude, if you want to work on this, like, let's, let's do it. And from there, it kind of took on, and here we are. See how, uh, see how it works out. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm excited because I can talk to someone I care about about things. Um, yeah. I wouldn't want to do this with a stranger, even though I'm publicly throwing it out there. It just makes it more personal, you know? No, and, and absolutely. And I think that's, like, the one thing's, like, once – I'm glad we have that trust where we can, like, tell each other um, some of the stuff that maybe some of the family members don't know. Right. Um, but, you know, and it's very therapeutic. For me and, and for us, we're talking about this. We're going to use this space to be therapeutic and just talk about it. And um, by all means, we're not saying we're experts. By all means, we're not saying this is the way to solve things, but we're just going to be talking about our experiences, how we dealt with it, and how things that obviously did not work and things are kind of working. And if that helps you, cool. And if you want to reach out to us or something, we're we're always willing to listen because I think that's the one thing that um, I learned throughout this whole process is sometimes you don't need somebody to give you advice. You just need somebody to listen. Yeah. Or spark a fire for you to do something, right? So yeah, yeah, some yeah. Influence, maybe some inspiration. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and I think that's like if we're that inspir- we're not saying we're gonna freaking inspire you to do greatness and stuff, but if we do, hey, just send yeah, us a I little mean, thank you card. You know, in five years, when we're doing Tony Robbins seminars that are uh, <laughs> social distance <laughs> on Zoom, yeah, and we're making that money, then fuck yeah. Yeah, then Thanks come up donations. to us at, at the uh, $500 per person meet and greet. Yeah, and you have to wear a goat head mask to get in. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're doing this build a no, style. Yeah, no no, no way around it. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Just no so, real goats, please. No, real no goats. not real goats. And if they are, we'll eat them later because we, you can't waste that video. <laughs> Because we love birria, homie. Yeah. <laughs> that cheek meat, you don't fuck with that cheek meat. That shit's delicious. Um, and if you don't know what we're talking about, just watch the Food Network for once in your life. Yeah. Or just go to a go to a taco truck, a good one. They'll have it. Yeah, hit us up. We can not give you some honky, good spots. Not those honky white boy ones. You got to go to a real one. Mm-hmm. Where they yeah, are. you have to go where uh, you're scared from the car to the front door of the place and even while you're inside the place you're kind of like fuck something's gonna happen any minute where you think like is this money laundering for a cartel or am i just (laughs) 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 that's the taco truck you want to eat at if you're not afraid for your life and your uh, public image then you're not eating at the right place and if they're not cooking with aprons and cowboy boots on you're not at the right place no. If the cook doesn't have silk a silk shirt on, you're fucking up and you're, you're fucking up. <laughs> See, this is what I wanted. 
And we haven't even gotten to the juicy stuff, but I wanted to do this and bust balls because that's one, how I am, and two, how I think people can help. It's a coping mechanism, right? So yeah, I mean, you can't laugh about stuff. Then you you just you're in deeper than you really think. And I mean, what I learn is one, I never believed it, but to, you know, one is time is the ultimate healer, and two, laughter is the greatest uh, medicine. The greatest right? medicine. Yeah, yeah, dude, hundred percent. I mean, Absolutely. even Chappelle, when he did that George Floyd thing, it, it was like the subject matter, why he was doing it was super dark, but it was one of the, you know, it was a super lighthearted powwow with, with a really fucking hilarious genius dude. And that was really cool. Yeah. Um, kind of a, oh, kind so of a cool. little deterrent, but um, so do you want to start it? Do you want me to ask you? I, I can do that. Sure. Go, um, go ahead and ask me, dude. So, Danny. What problems have you dealt with in the last year or before COVID? So, um, <laughs> so with me, it kind of started late September of last year. Um, I started at a new job um, teaching youth again. Before I was working with adults, teaching night school. I went to the morning teaching youth. And... Um, like everything was fine the first couple of weeks and then i'm not sure if i came in with like an eagle or whatever it was but my personal expectations that i put on myself i wasn't reaching them like i wasn't doing them and then you know your mind starts playing tricks on you and i started thinking like like people um, i was letting the people who hire me like i was letting them down and i was letting people down and then um, I guess I'm not a professionist, um, which I really don't know. But I always said, like, I don't take myself serious, but I take anything I do very serious. And I think, like, the mixture of that was very, like, um, it was very, like, hard. Like, having some expectations and not reaching it yourself and, like, feeling like a failure, like, to those who put trust in you. Like, I felt like I was laying them down. So that was, like, professional level. That was really hurting me personal level um the relationship i was in at the time was in um it was kind of starting to go down and there's really and there was nothing i could do at the moment to kind of like save it so it, it was just like a mixture of both things and then eventually the um the the relationship did um did break off we we both decided that we needed um, some time to like fix ourselves and then what happened with me was I went through um, like I felt like my personal life was a complete mess mm -hmm. and I felt like my professional life was also a complete mess and I just felt like I just hit my lows man I hit the lows lows I felt like I was letting everybody down I felt like um, like I wasn't worth anything like I wasn't worth having this job I wasn't worth you know, feeling a certain way or having certain things. And it was like a kind of like, okay, I'm being punished for, you know, I'm, I'm being punished in a sort of way. And I convinced myself to that this world was better off without me. I convinced myself that if I remove myself from, from this world, everybody will be able to be, will be better than me, dude. And I remember, um, like I, I just depression hit and my anxiety hit dude and i was like sick i was throwing up every hour i i couldn't eat anything i couldn't sleep all day i was just so tired i wanted to go sleep and at night when i wanted to go sleep i couldn't go sleep like i was wide awake and it was like same thing over and over and i remember um i remember i was home alone my parents were out of town my family was out of town my sister was here but my sister when um like went to have dinner with her boyfriend or something and i remember thinking to myself like dude like this is this is my time to like to release everybody to have everybody move forward without me like i thought honestly and i remember i already knew exactly where what, what i was going to do i knew exactly how i was I, like okay i'm going to go get some rope and i knew exactly oh, and shit. um yeah dude and then i was um my backyard my we have like a not like a deck but we have like a, a cover and we had like two by fours and they were open and um and they're like maybe like 12 feet high 
so it was, it was tall enough where I can just, you know, do something dumb and like jump off or something. And, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to call 911, report myself. So that way they can come take me away and my family won't have to see me like this. Cause right. I didn't want my family to see me like that. And I think that was like the last thing I'm like, Hey, yeah, they're going to hate me for doing this, but I don't want their last image of me being like this. Right. And I remember I, um, I went out to actually do it. And um, I didn't notice that during the week, my parents actually closed off all those two by fours. Hmm. So like where I was going to put the rope over, like it wasn't there no more. And yeah. it should have been a sign. It should have been, for me, that should have been a sign like, hey, this, it's not your time yet. But I didn't take it as a time. I was like, fuck, even to do that, I suck. Like, like even damn. to like. Parents really don't yeah, understand. Like, yeah no <laughs> and for me it was like it was like dude like even to do the most simplest task i'm not good at it. and like this is why i'm an inconvenience well to make and you I feel think, better it's yeah. not a simple task but yeah no it's not dude it's not and and after that like i had my highs and lows and i remember um i felt that way again like early 2020 like in january and um, I made a comment to my friends over at the L3 podcast. It's just like, oh, whatever. Like, everybody will move on. You know, I, something, like, again, I was convinced. And they actually reached out to my um, to my brother and my sister. And um, I remember the next day, my brother came to my work in the parking lot. And he's like, hey, man, c- come outside. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. Go outside. And um, he's like, I got some coffee for you. I'm like, okay. Why, why is, you know, my brother being a fucking nice guy? And then, like, he told me, he's like, hey, man, he showed me the text. He's like, hey, you're saying this, dude. Like, what the, you know, what's going on, dude? Like, what the fuck? And I'm like, you know, it, it was like, I'm, I was fronted with my truth. And I just, rather than, like, no, no, it's like, hiding it like I always would. I'm like, yeah, dude. I, I told him exactly how I felt like I was an inconvenience. I was worthless and all this stuff. And um, we had a good cry. And then um, that's when I realized, like, no, dude, like, I need to go and get some help. And, um, yeah, and I did, but that's, that's pretty much what led me to start taking, um, you know, what led me to start thinking about myself first and putting my mental health first. But what happened with you, dude? Um, with me, it's, 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 um, you know, it was my, um, I'll explain this more in detail probably in future episodes, but, Basically, the cliff notes is my mom passed on September 3rd. Um, sorry to hear, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, dude, it was it was rough. Um, I'll explain that more in detail because that's a whole thing on its own. But um, Yeah, for sure. That was September. Uh, like you said, November. Um, it was Thanksgiving. Um, funny how holidays, right? Holidays always mm-hmm. fucking either yeah. the best or the worst. So this Thanksgiving, I was drinking Jack Daniels um, at my uncle's house. And, you know, I just was, I got pretty drunk. And, you know, you got all these things buried in your psyche and they usually find their way out, right? So me and Steph obviously got in this really dumb, 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 heated argument. Um, I was really drunk. So when I'm drunk, I'm either mean or hypersensitive. In this case, I was hypersensitive because of all the stuff that was going on with, happened with my mom. Steph was also mm-hmm. pregnant, so I'm obviously not going to be abusive to her. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I kind of, we were just verbally um, just fighting. And, um, you know, it just got to a point where I felt like the alcohol made me feel like, look, you're going through this. She doesn't want to be around you. Now you're wearing on your, your wife, your kids. Um, I, I started saying shit out loud that I shouldn't have said, you know, I, I, I literally, um, I, I ended up leaving the house it was late too. It was probably like 12, 11 or 12. I had work the next day too. I had work on a Friday. It was a Thursday and, um, I left the house cause I had to get out. I said, okay, I'm not, I don't want to punch a wall mm-hmm. or do something stupid like that. Right. There's no point. So just drive, cool yourself off. But the problem is before I left, Cause I didn't really know what I was going to do, but, um, I did, I was being a little dramatic and upset because I was so shit faced, which is I'm admitting to getting behind a wheel 
when I was somewhat drunk. Um, but I walked over to my mom's urn and I said goodbye. And Steph, like, I freaked her the fuck out. And then I just walked away. Like I said goodbye to my kid. I said goodbye. I put my hand on my mom's urn. I said goodbye. Um, I was kind of choked up because I was just hella sad. And then I ended up leaving and I went driving and I and I felt better because I was just out of the house. I wouldn't answer her calls. So that's freaking her out. She thinks um God knows what she's thinking. Um yeah. so I literally, you know, selfishly I did this because she upset me and then I know I selfishly did all that to upset her. Um, but I, you know, I, what ended up happening was she, she called the cops cause she was worried about me and she didn't know how to get a hold of me. And I was mm -hmm. mad. I was pissed. I was like, why the fuck would you call the cops on me? That's bullshit. Yeah. Cause I knew firsthand. I knew, okay, once the cops get called, I'm screwed. Now it's a domestic, it's either going to be domestic violence or it's going to be something like that. Because even if she says it's fine, the initial call, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen. So I was like, fuck, I'm screwed. So now my, my first response idea was I should just lay low and just hide out, which is exactly what I should have done. Um, I ended up going back to the house. Oh, and by the way, they, um, funny thing I was learning. She, they were tracking me. I was smart enough to put my phone in airplane mode because I didn't want to answer her calls. But she admitted mm -hmm. to me, she's like, they can't track you where you are because your phone's off. Your phone was off. And I was like, wow, how smart of me to flee. And by having airplane mode, the cops didn't know where I was. So the cops could have rolled up on me and it would have been all bad if it wasn't even at my house. It would have been worse. So anyway, I get yeah. back to my house. I'm just tired at this point. I just want to go inside. There's two cop cars. My dumb, arrogant ass looks at the cops like, yeah, okay. And then I'm, I'm still, I'm like, okay, I don't care what you're saying. I'm going in and going to sleep. I, uh, the cops are like, I can't let you go inside. I'm like, well, I live here. It's my house and I'm going to do what I want to do. And, um, I put the key in the keyhole and he's all, I'm not going to let you go inside. And, and then I literally arrogantly was like, well, then you need to fucking restrain me and find a way to deal with it because I'm getting in my fucking house. So they did. The cops like, all right. <laughs> yeah. I basically yeah. was just, it was just this giant cry for help. Yeah. And um, they put me in handcuffs. They said, okay, you realize she told us all this, blah, blah, blah. You don't have any weapons on you. Okay, here's the problem. You're not going in your house tonight. I'm like, what? They're like, we can't let you in there. It's not going to happen. We called an ambulance. Uh, we 5150 you, which means you're harmed to yourself or others, and you mm -hmm. have to stay 72 hours. Um, involuntary in a psych ward oh wow so i at that point was like i got work tomorrow i i mean i'm fine i my mom just passed you know i'm i drank a little for thanksgiving it's a holiday guys like help me out a little bit i don't need to go to a psych ward mm -hmm. it, at this point it's out of our control i'm like what and then you know ambulances are fucking expensive too so i'm like great cool yeah i'm sure my insurance will cover this and then um, yeah thanks for fucking $800 charge you asshole. Oh, it was more. Steph told oh, the cops, I just want him home. I don't want him to get arrested or anything like that. So then she got mad at the cops because then they were taking me away. Mm -hmm. And I said, can't you just take me downtown and book me like, and let me go in the morning? Like, I, I don't need to go to a psych ward. They're like, no. So I get in an ambulance. They strap me into this fucking ambulance. They said, oh, wow. Yeah, because of the circumstances, they had to leather strap me in like fucking Michael Myers. So... I get strapped into this fucking ambulance and I felt like Hannibal Lecter because when I get out of the ambulance, <laughs> when I get out of the ambulance, it's this fucked up thing where they roll you out and yeah. you're still upright. So I felt like Hannibal Lecter getting out of the fucking van. And I'm like, God, dude, this is not only is it embarrassing, but I'm like, I, I've seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Like I'm, I'm more sane than Jack Nicholson. Like uh, what am I doing mm -hmm. here? So I get in there Everyone's kind of looking at you because they're trying to fill you out. And I'm just talking about the staff, not the crazy people. Yeah. So the staff's like, is this guy really nuts? The whole time they're thinking, that, I'm sure. And I'm like, fuck. And you, you can't say you're not crazy. Everyone says that. So yeah, of course. I get in there. They fucking make me get naked. Um, I got to change into this stupid, you know, hospital gown. Um, they take all your belongings from you. They, let, they luckily let me keep my jewelry. Um, 
And they said, okay, well, breakfast is going to be in about four hours. It's 4 a.m. right now. This was a 12. It's already been four hours. It's 4 a.m. right yeah. now. You want to just go to sleep? Breakfast is at six. I said, like, yeah, I'm just going to go to bed. He says, okay, we'll let you sleep in the TV room. So I get into this place, and by it is so fucking terrifying because when you get in there, it's, it's, there's no books. There's no music. There's no, the, the TV room had a place where a TV was. There's no TV. Oh, um, shit. So it's just like an abandoned. They give you, yeah, they space? give you a blanket and, and two chairs, and you put the chairs together and you sleep on them. And, and I slept there as long as I possibly could with my back against the wall. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously, and it's not a homophobic thing, I was just like, <laughs> I don't trust any of these fucking people. I'm sleeping my, my, my back to the wall. Um, it wasn't yeah. like an anal rape worry. It was just, you know, you're vulnerable when you don't see what's happening. So I'm hearing all this weird shit, but once eight o'clock rolls around, everyone's awake. So that's when it gets yeah. really, really weird. And um, how are we doing on time? We're at 31 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, it's weird. Um, the food's terrible. There was this really crazy white guy that was being super racist to the black guys that the, the, most of the staff were black. Um, and he was just saying the N word a lot. There was this crazy black guy that wanted to fight him who kind of looked like Raekwon from Wu-Tang. And I, I kind of wanted to back him up, but I was like, I'm, I'm minding my own business. I want to get the fuck out of right, here. Right. I'm on good behavior, you know? So, but I was just like, what a fucking mess this is. And then, you know, there was a lady that wanted a fake call her kid. And, and then there was one dude, who had a book and he told me, I mean, that's the thing you, you got to assume everyone's a liar and everyone's crazy when you're in there. But one guy told me he was, his dad's an, a high up guy in the CIA and he was passed around like a, a, a sex doll to uh, other adults. And, and it, I don't know. Shit. Yeah. I'm just like nodding. Okay, cool. Like I'm listening, but in my head, I'm like, I need to get the fuck out of here, dude like what the fuck am i doing here right now like and, yeah and then luckily i finally talked to someone i said okay like they said that the doctor evals are today um you might be able to get out early because clearly you're not at the level of everyone else here mm -hmm. um the food was fucking terrible by the way um what what was it it was nice they had free food but the eggs tasted like plastic. The um, bread was so fucking dry and just felt like they didn't even use yeast. Um, it was almost like a fucking cracker from a Catholic church, but they hydrated it with a little bit of water and just yeah. spread it out. It, it, it was disgusting. Like all the food was terrible. Like it was, it was sustenance, but it was mm -hmm. like, you were like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I'll eat Taco Bell. Like, yeah. That's going to that's gonna make me feel better than this. And that, that shit's terrible too, but. Um, I finally got to talk to a doctor. They said, okay, I basically admitted, you know, look, I, I'm going to go to therapy and I kind of did want to go, but I was just telling him what they wanted to hear to get the fuck out of there. Right. I only stayed like 12 hours. That's not bad. Um, they even called me an Uber. It was kind of cool. And I was kind of creeped out the whole Uber ride. Cause I was like, I wonder if the Uber lady thinks I work there or if I'm a nut job. So yeah, like this guy was just released. I was keeping my mouth shut. Kind of, I was just being subtle. She picked me up and I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. I'm glad to get out of here. You know, and she's like, yeah, okay, well, how's your day going? And I'm like, better now. Like, you know, just yeah. super short, but like, you know, just being polite. She did. She was fine. She didn't give a shit. But yeah, um, I just was like, it was the weirdest experience. Very humbling. Like it made mm -hmm. me realize one in my own experience that I wasn't suicidal um, because I went and saw it was almost like a scared straight moment. Like I was able okay, to go yeah. see all these people that were really dealing with this stuff. They were really so mm -hmm. far gone past the point of getting help to the point where they needed medication because they were offering, they were willing to give me pain medicine, uh, loopy pills, you know, you know, the shit they give you that makes you space out and stuff. Yeah. Things just to like ease the pain or something. Yeah. But basically turn you into, you know, a, a space cadet. And I was like, um, I'm like, I don't want anything. I didn't take Tylenol. I didn't take nothing. Um, but it just was super creepy because these people were so excited to get their pills. And I was like, I need to go. Like, this is not where I belong. But then, you know, it made me think in my head. I said, you know, I let myself down more than anybody. And it bothered me because 
that whole situation could have just easily been avoided if I just walked away and didn't make a giant scene, you know, to make her feel like shit. And it was a learning experience. Like I deserved what I got, but it kind of made me realize like, look, dude, bigger picture, you as much fucked up shit as you're going through right now, look at all those crazy people that you didn't understand. Yeah. I'm barely scratching the surface of depression. Like as bad as I thought I was, like it wasn't even close to what these people were going through. And it kind of made me respect it and made me realize, look, dude, get your shit together. Um, yeah. Now's the time to either talk to someone or just be a little more um, active with your, your mind and your time with your, with, with yourself. You know, if you, you find yourself lazy and, and vulnerable, then you need to do something to challenge yourself to get your mind off of that. You know, yeah. But that was mine in a nutshell. That's pretty much how it was. It, I, I kind of sped through a few parts, but it. it I mean, we'll, we'll get we'll get yeah. deep into it later. Yeah, it just was super. I've never told anybody. Like I, I mean, I've, yeah. I've obviously told like a couple friends, mm-hmm. but I, I, I didn't tell anybody. I mean, it was. It's. I'm glad I let. I'm letting it out, but it's just you know, like you said. I mean, what you were saying, it's not something you just you know shoot off on a any podcast about or, or just tell a friend, Hey, yeah. by the way, you don't want to get coffee and hey, go, oh, I tried to, you know, do this. And but no one's going to, yeah. you're worried what they're going to think of you. You're worried. You're almost worried. They're not a good enough friend to listen and you're going to mm-hmm. judge them for it. Yeah. It's kind of like what you said. You want someone who can listen and mm-hmm. if they're going to look at you like you're a piece of shit when you say it, you're just going to be like, yeah. okay, you'll be polite. But in the inside, you're going to be like, I'm not going to talk to you ever again. Yeah, like fuck this guy. Fuck that like, dude. Like this yeah. Fuck this maniac over here. Yeah, and sometimes it's a gamble. You're like, I got a really good, you know, you, you might think you have really good friends, but then like how many of them could you talk to something like this about? You know, so it's like it kind of goes yeah. into that whole insecurity thing or just projecting shit. But I'm like, yeah. okay, everything you were saying was so familiar. Mm-hmm. You're a little more well thought out and organized than me. But well, I mean, I, I, I was went just through, throwing like, out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I personally feel like you were going through worse than I was. And that's you know what, what dude. Thinking. Like, no, no. One thing, dude, that I realized because, I mean, obviously, for me to feel this way, it wasn't just like overnight. It it was something that that was built, you know, yeah. years of suppressing and hiding and wearing masks so no one can think of it, but. Yeah. One thing somebody told me once was like, if it's a big enough deal that makes you feel not, you know, if it's making you mess up, then it's a big deal for you. Like, don't right. compare your problems with anybody else. Yeah, and that's true. Once that's, and so I'm like, yeah, I mean, if, I mean, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'll do if my mom passed away, dude. Like, I'll probably be right there with you. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'll do, dude. You know I don't know what? even want to think about it. No, you don't and you shouldn't. But what I want to say is, maybe this will help, you know, because, and that's kind of the point that, you know, we were bringing to ourselves and to each other when we were talking about this is, is this, this is for us first, but you know, it's definitely for everyone because yeah, it's relatable. Like we all feel like shit. We all feel like we're underperforming. we all feel like something in our lives just isn't clicking. You know, we, we feel tired. We feel uninspired. And we, and sometimes there's, it feels like there's no way around it or no way out. And, you know, we're kind of just proof that there is like, obviously, like if we made more bad choices last year, we might, this podcast wouldn't be going on right now. I, I'll be talking about the West, the picture we took instead of having this conversation with you. And I think this is a good, this is a good uh, time to end this and this conversation, this episode. So then, then we'll continue this off on the next one. I mean, yeah, I think besides so we only have like we only have thirty seconds left on this Zoom call anyway. So oh well, this, I was this gonna is say, a good way. Um, keep tuning in. We're gonna do more of these, and uh, this is just the beginning, guys. So um, thanks for the support, and we're gonna have more support for you guys as well. Yeah, and if you guys uh, are both of us, we're open to hear you guys because i it's i know it's corny i've seen this on facebook but it's true i rather hear about your problems than hearing about your death yeah 
and and we'll set up an email and do all that soon to, soon to come but for now ta-ta for now adios amigos all right later guys <laughs>